Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's clip, I'd like to answer some of the questions you've been asking about the brand new Evo 2. Now, ever since this drone was announced this year at CES, the interest in the product has been sky high, and I think some of that has to do with the fact that it's been kind of a quiet time for drone releases, so all of us are thirsty for any information about a new drone being released to the market. But I think more than that, Auto Robotics has really built the product with the Evo 2 that pushes the boundaries in a lot of different directions. So for example, the Evo 2 can fly longer than any other quad in the market today. That's a big deal. It can fly as far or further than any other quad. The imaging system is next generation technology. It's got an 8K resolution camera in it, which is well better than anything in the air today. It's actually better than most terrestrial cameras that are out there today in the consumer market. So they're way ahead as far as the imaging package goes. In addition to that, they've made it simple for you to swap out that camera so you can change to a combo FLIR camera down the road if you want to in the same airframe. They built in 360 degree obstacle avoidance and a whole lot of incredibly cool technology. Now any one of those things would have been enough for us to pay attention to it. And they didn't change one, they changed all of them at the same time. So this isn't a me too drone, this is a come and get me drones. <laughs> They've really shot a, a shot across the bow of all the competitors out there and built a product that everybody else kind of rocked back on their heels and went, okay, we've got to up our game. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens this spring from the major competitors to Autel. But right now, this drone is ahead of the pack as far as features and functions. And the best part is they brought it in at a price that I think is incredibly reasonable. So you can imagine the amount of questions we got. Now I can't answer them all in one clip or I'll be here for three days, but I promise you I've kept the list. And what I'm gonna to try to do today is answer maybe the top eight or 10 questions, just so you get the answers you need as quickly as possible. And these are the most popular questions out there. Now, now, we've been lucky that we've had this drone before the release, before CES announcement. So I've been flying it a ton ever since it showed up. And I've tried to answer all your questions with examples and some scientific stuff behind it to explain how it does what it does. But I promise you there'll be follow-on clips that go through the rest of the questions. So if I don't get to a question today that you've got, please either send us an email or drop it in the comments below. I'll add it to the list and we'll make sure that we get those questions answered. Having said all that, there have been tons of questions coming in saying, how does it compare to the Skydio? How does it compare to the Mavic 2? How does it compare to this drone? We've got clips started on all those, and I don't like to just sit here and talk to you about those differences. I like to test them and give you specifics on how they differ and how much better this one may be compared to another drone or vice versa. So stay tuned for those as well, because I know a lot of you are looking forward to the spring and you're making your buying decisions now on what drone might be right for you. So those clips are gonna help you make those decisions. All right, enough about that. So what I'm gonna do to make this simpler I'll put an index below where you can actually fast forward if you need to, to get to a specific question. That way, if you don't care about what I'm talking about now, you can jump ahead and go to the section you really care about. But I thought I'd start off with a general discussion of what models are gonna be released, what packages are gonna be released for those models and the pricing around that, because that's probably the most popular questions we've got on the channel are around what versions are gonna be released and what are the packages look like and what are the costs gonna be? And I'll do that in a second. But before I get to that, hands down, the most popular question we've gotten is, when is this thing gonna be released and when can I start ordering it? And honestly, I have a production model here. So the one they sent me wasn't a prototype. Like a lot of times I get drones in advance and you can tell that they're not ready for prime time. There's parts on them that aren't painted the same color or maybe there aren't parts on them that are gonna be on the production model. This product that I've been testing is the production model, which means they've been in production for quite some time. So I know the drones are being built. I know the factories have been humming, the boxes are printed, everything's ready to go. But unfortunately, right now China is going through a very tragic situation with this coronavirus and that's kind of shut everything down in China. Both manufacturing, shipping, people can't get to offices. So as much as I'm excited about the product being released to the market, my heart goes out to that country and the people that are working there around the dangers of what that flu looks like. It's one of the worst um, disasters, potential disasters that we've had in quite some time around our health. So I really want them to get healthy first and then start shipping it. But you have to understand that that's definitely gonna impact both the production cycles, the shipping cycles, and all the rest of the stuff to get it from the point where it's being built to the consumers. But I did talk to him yesterday and we we spent a little bit of time talking about when they think they're going to start shipping. Originally, they were supposed to be out in January. Things got a little delayed with the Chinese holiday. And now it looks like they're going to start shipping in a couple of weeks at the beginning of March, and maybe even sooner if they get that sort of health crisis under control in China and people can get back to work, because it really is that serious. So hang in there. I'm here to tell you it's not like they built a couple 
and they've got to start production, which is going to be months worth of work. They've actually built the products. And the fact that you can swap out the camera means they're building one airframe and they just have to bolt in the camera. So it's not like there's five different models like there are with other drones out there where every model's got to have a production run. So I expect that they're going to be released soon. So stay tuned to our channel. We'll make an announcement and I'll tweet it out as well to let you know the minute they start taking orders. But I love this product and I, I know you guys are going to be really excited when the thing goes on sale. All right, so next one I'm going to talk about are the different product uh, offerings they're going to have because there's going to be four specific models and I'll talk about those in detail in a minute. And then I'll talk about the packages because they're going to release each of the modules in, or models in two different packages depending on if you want the extras or not want the extras. So stay tuned and I'll get into that next. Once I finish that, the next most popular question we had was, how good is the obstacle avoidance? Because a lot of people out there are looking at other drones that have obstacle avoidance on them, and that's a feature that a lot of people really love. So I'm gonna jump right from that discussion around models and pricing into the obstacle avoidance testing we've done out in the field, and I'll show you just how good this thing is and how smart it really is for obstacle avoidance. So let's get into the models, and then I'll be back with more comments after that. As a reminder, the EVO 2 will be offered in three different varieties, which are essentially the same quad with a different imaging package, which you can later swap out and add a different camera to the one you've purchased. The first model is the EVO 2, which features a half-inch sensor that can record a variety of video resolutions, including 8K at 25 frames per second. The next model is the EVO 2 Pro with a larger 1-inch sensor capable of recording video resolutions up to a full 5.5K at 60 frames a second. There will be two versions of the EVO 2 Dual released, both of which feature an HD half-inch optical sensor in addition to a thermal FLIR sensor. The difference between the two models is the resolution of that thermal sensor. The one model has a 320 by 256 at 60 frames a second, and the second model has a 640 by 512 resolution at 60 frames a second. The optical sensor on both is exactly the same and can record 4K video footage at 30 frames a second. All of the EVO 2 models will be released in two different bundles. The EVO 2 standard bundle will include the drone, controller, controller cable, battery charger, battery, six spare props, two cables to connect your controller to your display device, and a set of user's manuals. This bundle will retail for $14.95. The EVO 2 rugged bundle will also include everything in the standard package, plus a spare battery and a rugged carrying case, and will retail for $16.95. The EVO 2 Pro Standard Bundle will include the drone, controller, controller cable, battery charger, battery, six spare props, two cables to connect your controller to your display device, and a set of user's manuals. This bundle will sell for $17.95. The EVO 2 Rugged Bundle will include everything in the Standard Bundle, plus a spare battery and a rugged carrying case, and will retail for $19.95. One of the questions we get an awful lot on the channel was how good is the obstacle avoidance on the EVO 2? So we're gonna test that today. Now behind me, I have a gigantic wall that's painted bright white, and I'm gonna fire the EVO 2 at that wall, and we'll see where it slows down and how close we can get to the wall before it actually stops. Now I wanna remind you that the obstacle avoidance on the EVO 2 is 360 degrees, so not only will it detect objects in front, It'll also see them in back, either side, above and below. So I may actually fire it at the wall backing up and maybe coming in from the side as well to see if those distances vary. So stay tuned and we'll test that next. Okay, with this first test, I'm gonna come in at speed across the field. As it gets closer, it's slowing down. Let's see where it actually stops. Right there. Boy, that was really nice too, because it actually reversed the motors it looked like and bucked back. And I'm gonna put that at around 25 or 30 feet away from the wall. Now let's see if I can creep in a little closer. Yep, yep, it's moving in slow. Oh, it doesn't like it. I'm trying to get in close as I can. It's still going in really slow, so it'll allow you to navigate around those obstacles. Let's see where it actually stops. That's it. So I'm about five feet away from it at this point, and it's not letting me go forward anymore. So it's definitely got an absolute limit to how close it'll get to an obstacle. All right, now I'll test the bottom sensors. Let's see how close I can get to that wall while I'm descending. All right, stops right there. That's about, it's hard to judge from here, but that looks like about five or six feet. So it's a little closer than it would be if you're moving towards it, but I think that's really great that it knows it's there. Let me try it one more time just to make sure it's consistent. Coming down, it sees it, and boom, it stops. Right, that's beautiful. So it definitely sees obstructions underneath it. Now I'm gonna fly it at the wall sideways and backwards to make sure those sensors are working as well. All right, now I'm coming in backwards across the field at speed. It's already slowed down. Let's see where it stops. Right there. 
Wow, right about the same exact spot. So the sensor on the back is just as sensitive. Now let me try and slowly move it in, see if it's got a physical limit. It's letting me go in, but it's really slow. So if you're around obstacles, it'll give you some maneuverability, but let's see if there's a physical stop. Please stop. <laughs> yep, that's it. That's exactly where the other one was. So I'm gonna gauge that at about five feet away from the wall and nothing I can do to back up. That's absolutely stopping right there. All right, now we'll try the left side sensors. I'm coming in at speed, it's slowed down. Let's see where it stops. Right about the same spot. So it looks like that left sensor is about as uh, good as the front and back sensors. Let me try and walk it in closer and see how close I can get. I'm gonna come in nice and slow. Actually, I have no choice. <laughs> it slows me down. So it does allow you to maneuver close to things. Oh, there was a hard limit. I'm gonna put that at about 15 feet out. Let's see if I can get any closer. Yeah, it's really going slow at this point. So if you're around trees or other obstructions, you can get close, but that's it. That's a physical limit. So we're about five feet, which again is the same as the front and the back sensor. So very impressive. I love the fact that it's sort of a gradual slow. It doesn't just stop abruptly and then not let you go closer. So it seems like they've got different stages of protection. If you're coming in fast, it's gonna stop you and then allow you to sort of continue, but at a slower pace. So pretty cool. These next two questions have to do with additional flight characteristics you've asked about for the Evo 2, so I thought I'd group them together. The first question is, how long can I fly the drone? And the second question is, how loud is the drone when I've got it up in the air compared to other drones on the market today? Now, I'll answer the first question here at the desk because I've been flying this a ton, so I'll give you my personal experience about how long you can expect to fly the drone and under what conditions, and then I'll take you outside. I'll put the Evo 2 up in the air. I've got an audio meter that I can capture some audio from it, and then I'll put a few other drones that are really popular right now up in the air as well, and you can do a quick side-by-side -side comparison. Now, I promise you, I'm going to get much more nerdy on that, on that sound profile because how loud it is and how annoying it is are two different things, and I've got a whole clip I'm working on that'll give you much more detail about what it sounds like compared to other drones, its whole sound profile. But for today, I'm going to try and answer the question quickly. So let's start with flight time. I've been flying this a ton ever since it showed up. The advertised flight time is 40 minutes, which is far longer than other drones on the market today. Most of them are in the 30s or below. So having a 40 minute flight time was really interesting to me because it means it's up in the air more and swapping batteries less, and I like that. The honest truth is I never fly a battery down below 20%. I always keep it 20% or higher because I don't want to get into an emergency situation where it's returning to home and trying to land someplace. I want to have control over it. So a 40 minute flight time is pretty good on, on paper, but I wanted to really see what it can do, not only hovering, but in really aggressive flying where I'm doing a lot of turns and I'm banking and I'm elevating and descending. So those two characteristics are pretty close. And I can tell you that worst case scenario on a full battery, bringing it back with 20% of battery life left in it, I've gotten a solid 30 to 32 minutes, maybe even 35 minutes, depending on how windy it was that day, with the drone flying. Now, that may not seem like a big deal. You might be thinking, well, big deal, other drones do 30, 33 minutes, but you have to remember, that's an additional five or six or maybe eight minutes of actual flight time. Not taking off, not landing or returning to home, but actual flight time on location where I'm filming something. And it may not seem like that much, but when you have the drone up in the air, I'm constantly surprised in my head of how much longer I'm flying on these batteries because you sort of develop this this feeling of how long a drone can be up once you've flown it a bunch you get used to how long you can fly it and putting this guy up it just seems like a way longer flight time than it really has on paper so solid flight time now I did notice a little less flight time obviously if there's a strong wind or I'm doing a lot of moving around or I'm, I'm ascending or descending obviously the more you work it the more electrons you're going to use and the lower the battery is going to be but in general I've been very very impressed with this I'm also impressed with how quickly the battery recharges using the charger they gave you so overall I can say you can expect a solid 30, 35 minutes if you're pushing it of flight time against that 40 minute limit. Now that's if you're really taking a risk and landing it with 5% left on the battery. But if you're like me conservative, you can get a solid 30 minutes out of this, no problem on a single battery. Now, obviously you're gonna to wanna to fly longer than that, so pick up a couple extra batteries and you'll be good to go. Now, as far as the loudness goes, again, I'm gonna take you outside in a minute and show you what this sounds like compared to say the Mavic 2, the Skydio. I think I have a Mavic Mini up in the air and a few others, but it's a, Bigger drone than all the other ones we're going to fly. So you put this up against the Mavic 2, it's a much bigger drone. It's also got, I think, a longer sweep on the propeller. So in general, I was expecting this to be very loud compared to the other ones, and you're going to be surprised by the results. So stay tuned, and I'll show you that next. 
Another question we received from a lot of you was how loud is the EVO 2 compared to other popular quads on the market? And what I'm going to do to test that is put the EVO 2 up and then I've got a few other drones with me and I'll put those up in the air as well and I'll use a meter to capture their sound levels. Now remember, sound level is one measurement of how annoying a drone really is. To really analyze that, you've got to look at the sound profile, which means you've got to record the audio and look for various frequencies that the propellers are generating because we all kind of find different frequencies annoying, so it's really going to be interesting to compare the EVO 2's sound profile against all the other drones that I'm flying. So I've got another clip I'm working on there that goes into a lot more detail. But for today, I'm just going to give you the raw sound output power from those drones so you can get a rough idea of how it sounds when it's flying. So stay tuned for that. Okay, we'll start off with the EVO 2. It looks like a 53.2 dBA. So that'll be a good comparison against the others. The Mavic 2 Zoom is 54.9 dBA. I'd put the Skydio right around 63 dBA. The Mavic Mini is 55.8 dBA. This last group of questions have pretty simple answers, so I thought I'd run through those now. The first has to do with the remote controller. Now, if you've flown the original Evo, you'll recognize this remote controller because the one for the Evo 2 is exactly the same controller. The difference is it's running newer firmware that can take advantage of some of the advanced features the Evo 2 brings to the market. But the question we got, which I thought was really interesting and shows how nerdy you guys are, had to do with the USB connections on the bottom. So when you open up the flap, you'll see a micro USB connection and a full-size USB-A connection. Now, I think some people saw the original video where I was going through the breakdown of what was included and they had questions about what those were used for. So pretty simple. The full-size USB-A is used with the cable that's included to connect up your display device. So you'll connect up the USB-A there. The other end of it, whether it be an Apple, a micro USB, or USB-C, connects up to your phone or your tablet, and that's what you'll use to fly. The other one is used for charging the controller. So you use the included cable, you plug in the micro USB on this side, plug the other end of it into a wall charger, and you can charge your controller, which charges pretty quickly depending on which charger you're using. One hidden feature that not a lot of people know about, and this is a really cool tip, is if you're out flying your drone and you've got your controller connected up here and you're flying your drone in the afternoon and maybe you've got five or six batteries with you so you're swapping out batteries like crazy it's late in the afternoon and all of a sudden you realize oh my gosh i'm going to run out of power on my controller and i can't continue to fly that can be really frustrating well the hidden feature is you can actually connect up the micro usb here connect this other end of it up to a battery bank a portable battery bank and charge your controller while you're flying so it allows you to extend your flying day because you're actually draining power from that battery bank to keep your controller powered up, which means you can continue to fly through whatever batteries you've got left. So it's a really nice little feature to use. Now, one thing we've done is we love inventing products. So I'm gonna put a plug in here for Drone Valley. When you're charging your controller, if you're using the included cable, you're tying up that charger. So you've got one USB-A that plugs into your wall charger, the other end plugs into your controller, and that's all you can really charge with that charger. So we've come out with what we call a Hydra cable, which has a USB-A connection on the end, so you plug that into your wall charger. On the other end are three different heads. There's a micro USB, an Apple, and a USB-C. So you can take the micro USB plug, plug it into your controller like this, plug it into your charger on the other end, and you've still got two other connections that you can use to charge your phone or your tablet or anything else you want to take with you. Maybe you've got a USB-C battery bank, you can charge that here, and if you've got an Apple phone, you can charge it there. So this cable gives you the ability to charge multiple devices from one single charger. It's really convenient to sort of plug everything in, put it up on a shelf and let it charge and you're ready to go. So that's pretty much what those USB connections are for. The next question had to do with 8K video. We got a lot of questions around, do I really need 8K? Why do you have 8K on the, on the camera? And the honest truth is, you don't need 8K today. 8K video is an advanced technology that's not really ready yet. You, most computers out there can't edit 8K footage. You can't really display it unless you've got some of the highest resolution, most modern displays out there. So you might be thinking, why do I need it? Well, the honest truth is you don't, but you will. So the important thing is when you buy a drone like this, you're investing a lot of money in it. You want to have a product that's going to last you three, four, five years. And I guarantee you, by the time the end of that cycle hits, 8K is going to be pretty popular. Certainly 4K high resolution like this can record is going to be commonplace. You're going to move into 8K. So what you're buying with this is the ability to record 8K when your display is ready for it, when the computers catch up, and you've got that built into your drone. So in a lot of ways, from a video perspective, it's future proof that you know you can record 8K when everything is ready to do that. But in the meantime, you can record some amazing 4K footage on it and not deal with the 8K if your computer can't handle it. So 8K is kind of a future product, but I love knowing that it's in the drone, so I don't have to worry about down the road upgrading my drone when I move into the 8K uh, ecosystem. So that's why you want 8K on the drone. Now, I've shot a lot in the 8K, and honestly, I've got a 
I've got an awesome computer, it's a beast, and I have a hard time editing that 8K footage, and even when I edit it, I don't really have a way to display it, so I've got to render it back to 4K. Now, one advantage of that is you do get a bigger picture. So I've got a little bit more room to crop if I need to, to pull in on a particular section. So for me, it's a bit of an advantage, but even with the beast of a computer I'm using, the thing starts to groan a little bit when I start rendering or try to move it around inside of uh, Premiere Pro. So 8K, again, is a future tech that you're gonna want. It's in there today, so that's really nice to have that in there. All right, the next one had to do with Tilted Horizon. One of the problems with the original Evo was that there were some issues with Tilted Horizon. So when you put it up in the air, you may see the, the horizon be a little bit off. And I, a couple of the videos that I took, people caught me on that and they said, hey, you got a Tilted Horizon in there. Is that the same problem with the Evo too? The honest truth is I've pulled the camera out of this thing so many times, swapping it out, swapping it back in, testing different things, that every time you put the new camera in, you should do a gimbal calibration. And I didn't do it. I got lazy in the bench. I put the camera in, ran outside because it was a beautiful Saturday afternoon, put the drone up and there was a tilted horizon in that. Now, two things. Number one, the minute I did the gimbal calibration, it sorted all that out. But even still, the, the geniuses over at Autel have built in a setting inside the software that allows you to adjust that gimbal tilt a little bit either direction. So you could adjust it in either direction. And you might be thinking, why would I ever do that? Well, let's say you crash the thing. Sometimes you crash it and maybe the camera gets knocked a little bit out of kilter and then you're gonna forever have problems with that gimbal not being aligned up with the horizon. So having that adjustment for the gimbal tilt gives you the ability to sort of adjust it as you need to if down the road you've got issues with your gimbal. So that's pretty cool. The last question, which is impossible for me to answer in this clip, is how does this compare to other drones on the market? And I've got separate clips, like I talked about, that are going to go through those details uh, pretty pretty deeply to give you an idea of how this compares to the Mavic 2, to the Skydio, to other drones that are in the market, sort of in the class of this drone. I will tell you that I've flown this, I fly all the drones out there, it compares very favorably with the Mavic 2 product. So today, between this and the Mavic 2 Pro or Mavic 2 Zoom, this is really a better quad, it's less expensive, and it's got features that the Mavic 2 doesn't have. Now, having said that, I'm sure DJI is hard at work on some amazing technology that's gonna hit the market in the springtime that may even leapfrog what this one does, but right now, this is the drone to own in that space. The next big question I get is, how does it compare to the Skydio 2? Because that's another hot drone that's on the market right now, and the honest truth is, they're different drones, and I'm gonna spend a lot of time talking about why they're different, this one flies a lot better than the Skydio. The Skydio to me tends to be a little bit sloppy in the air. It doesn't stop when I stop it. It tends to slide into turns. It's not as easy to control as this type of drone. This is a very precise in-the-air drone. When I take my fingers off the joystick or tell it to do something, it immediately moves to that position and stays there. So from a flyer's perspective, this is a flyer drone. The Skydio is a wonderful drone in its own right, but it's more of a follower drone. So that drone does an amazing job of dodging things in the woods. You've probably seen the video I've done on it, but it dodges trees in the woods. It'll follow me through the most complex environments. It does really well on recording video and taking great pictures, but it's not really a flyer's drone. It's more of a follower drone. Having said that, this isn't as good with dodging obstacles. It's got obstacle avoidance, which really makes it a safe drone to fly, but it's not gonna follow you through the woods. It's gonna come up to that grouping of trees and go, nope, I'm not going in there because it's a complicated environment. I'll wait out here till you come back out. So you have to decide between the two, do I want a flying drone, which is what I prefer, do I want a follower drone for the circumstances when you're climbing a mountain or on a skateboard or out in your boat? So the choice is really yours, but again, I've got a clip coming that goes into a whole lot more detail, side-by-side -side comparisons between those two products, as well as the Mavic 2 and a few other drones in the market. So that's pretty much all I had for today. I'm sorry this clip ran so long, but again, I had an index down below where you could advance to the sections you cared about. Um, I've got a lot more content coming on this, and if I haven't answered your questions today, like I'd mentioned before, please drop those in the comments below. Also below, you'll find a link. If you want to go check this out, that link will take you to the Autel Robotics website, and that's the place that you're going to want to keep an eye for when they open up the purchase of the product. So they're going to open that up pretty soon. That link will take you right to the site. If you use that link, we get a little credit for it, so we'd appreciate that to support the channel. One last thing I'll say is if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please hit that little icon down the bottom and subscribe and turn the bell on because I've got a lot of late-breaking news that are coming on new drones that are being released. I've got a V-Copter ordered, so we're going to be doing a review on that as soon as it hits here. And I've got a ton more clips coming on the brand new uh, Autel Evo 2 that you're going to want to see around all the other questions you guys have asked and a few comparisons between other drones. So that's pretty much it for today. I love putting these clips together, like I say every time. If you guys are enjoying this content, I've got a lot more coming. So definitely stop back and check out what we're going to be posted over the next couple of weeks. And that's pretty much it. So thanks an awful lot for watching. And until next time, happy flying.